Selena's wedding day was everything she'd hoped it would be. Almost. Although Selena's mum had wanted to throw a wedding so far over the top that it wouldn't have been able to be held on planet Earth, Selena Cade and Selena's dad, who was funding everything, was happy to agree that less was more, convinced Selena's mum that a casual wedding was more tasteful. Selena's brother David, who was as good looking as Selena was pretty, but who thought jeans and a black shirt was fashion, offered the winning argument. If you don't go along with what she wants, he had told their mum, she and Cade would always elope. Or could always elope, sorry. Instead of the ridiculous fluffy dress Selena's mum had chosen, a dress in which Selena looked like a meringue, meringue, uh, Selena picked a sleek vintage silk dress with a high neck, long sleeves, and semi-full skirt. Rather than a veil with a 20-foot train, she had only a small spray of flowers in her hair, which she'd arranged into an equally sleek and simple French twist. Or oh, beautiful. Uh, Cade wore a navy blue suit with a white shirt and white tie. In addition to this downscaled wardrobe, they chose to look... Uh, they chose to use local apple blossoms and white daisies for their flowers. Selena's mum had argued for a large bridal party, but Selena and Cade had each chosen to have just their best friend stand with them. Happily smiling, red-headed Val, wearing an A-line navy blue cocktail dress, was Selena's attendant. One of Cade's college buddies, lanky and good-natured Greg, oh no, wearing navy blue pants and a white shirt, was Cade's best man. Although Selena's mum had argued for an upscale wedding venue and a fancy catered reception, she'd yet again given in to Selena's preference, which was to be married outside. Janice had offered her backyard for the wedding and reception venue. She, had, she and her army of neighbourhood lady friends also organised the unorthodox but fun and easy potluck reception. As Selena stood under the apple blossom covered arbour in the lush green garden behind Janice's home, she faced her new husband after the minister, a perpetually smiling curly haired man, intoned, I now pronounce you husband and wife. This was the moment, the one Selena had been envisioning for so long. Selena looked up into Cade's hooded eyes and expected to feel nothing but the rush of love and joy she'd held in her mind's eye. Unfortunately, the reality didn't live up to her expectations. Although Selena did feel her love for Cade as he smiled down at her, and she did feel happy to be his new wife, she also felt something she never thought she'd feel on her wedding day. She felt suspicious. For the first time in two years that she'd been with Cade, Selena didn't fully trust him. Something about his weirdness over the trunk and his fondness for the unpleasant little robot was bothering Selena. You may kiss your bride, the minister told Cade. Cade leaned down and took Selena in his arms. His embrace made her think of all of their history together. It reminded her of how much she loved him. So, as she kissed him, she tucked away her nebulous distrust. Over a hundred people attended Selena and Cade's wedding, and because they'd been instructed to dress to have fun, don't dress to impress, everyone had a roaring good time. The food was incredible and the local acoustic band was unexpectedly talented and played everything from bluegrass to rock to classical, which managed to make everyone happy at one point or another. Dancing wasn't one of Cade's talents. A man had to have some shortcomings. He managed to shuffle through their slow song and he got silly and jerked around the dance floor like a man being electrocuted during the fast songs. Selena danced her heart out. She had a blast. At the end of the reception, before Selena and Cade got in their SUV, now bedecked in streamers and tin cans and featuring a Just Hitched sign on the back, Selena's family came up to her to wish her well. Selena's handsome grey-haired dad, happily casual in slacks and an open-collared pale blue shirt, hugged her first. As he held her close, he whispered, I'm so proud of you. Remember, be your own person. Trust your instincts. Always choose joy. Selena pulled back and smiled into her dad's wet eyes. She wiped her own tears away. I love you, dad. Her brother hugged her next. He, too, whispered some advice in her ear. Don't screw it up. When Selena's mum, who stuck to her guns and wore an expensive designer crepe gown for the wedding, Selena had to admit it suited her lovely, tall and regal mother, put her arms around Selena last and asked, Are you happy? Selena was honestly able to answer, Yes. By then, Selena had nearly forgotten about the odd feeling she'd had about Kate. She decided she'd just had pre-wedding jitters. That decision was solidified during the two blissful weeks that followed. Kate and Selena had decided to postpone their honeymoon. 
For one thing, Cade had just started his new job, and for another thing, they wanted to funnel their free time and their money into fixing up the farmhouse. Accordingly, they spent their wedding night in their new home. The next day was a Sunday, and they spent the day cuddled up in their new four-poster king-sized bed, their wedding present to each other, poring over design magazines and paint chips. It might not have been everyone's idea of a perfect day, but Selena felt like she was floating on a cloud. The floating cloud, however, plummeted to earth the next day. Cade went off to work before 7am on Monday. Selena started her day more leisurely. Although Cade loved to go for runs in the morning, Selena didn't like an early rise, and she didn't like running either for that matter. After Cade left, she went for a long brisk walk, and when she came back, she made herself some peach spice herbal tea. Still wearing the leggings and t-shirt she'd worn on her walk, Selena loved working at home, she took the tea into her office at about 9.30. Selena's office was a small spare room just off the living room. All it contained at the moment was a white metal folding table that held her laptop and a desk lamp, her soft grey tool-backed desk chair, the only piece of office furniture she'd splurged on, and t stacks of fireboxes. Selena had big plans for this room, which she intended to implement over the coming week, but first, she needed to do a little actual work. Still floating in post-wedding euphoria, Selena smiled as she opened her laptop. She clicked on the icon for her website dashboard, and she began reading her most recent reader comments and responding to them. In the third comment, the reader thanked Selena for helping to keep old baggage in the past. The words completely derailed Selena's plans to work, because they immediately made Selena think of Kay's hidden past and his unnatural reaction to her curiosity about his hideous trunk. Selina responded to the reader's comment, but she wasn't able to concentrate on the next one. She stood. She was going to find out what was in the next, what was in the trunk. Selina didn't know whether Cade's trunk had anything to do with whatever happened at Freddy's Pizzaplex, but he'd had the same strained reaction to both things, and Selina had felt the same disquieting feeling about both subjects. Something that Selina couldn't put a finger on told her that the two things were linked. After the confrontation over the trunk in the living room on the day the movers had delivered their stuff, Cade had picked up the trunk and said, I'll stick this in the darkest corner of the attic. You'll never have to see it again. He'd grinned and winked at Selina, and she'd smiled back. However, their light exchange had been fake. Recalling the moment now, Selina remembered how forced the grin, wink and smile had been. What if I want to see it again? Selina said out loud now. She closed her laptop and stood. Selina's tennis shoes made little squeaks against the old, uneven hardwood flooring as she strode out of her office and trotted up to the second floor. When she reached that floor, she hurried down the long hall toward the doorway to the attic. Reaching the door, she took a deep breath and yanked it open. A puff of dust wafted into the hall, making Selina sneeze. A faintly musty smell followed the dust. Unlike the attic and the house Selina had grown up in, which had one of those pull-down staircases, the farmhouse's attic was reached by a normal flight of stairs, albeit slightly narrower than the stairs leading from the first floor to the second. The wood rises of the stairs were warped and worn, but they were sturdy. Selina grabbed the white painted railing. The paint was dirty from years of use, and it was chipping. She headed up the stairs. Although Selina had explored the attic with delight when she and Cade had toured the house before they bought it, she hadn't been back up to the slope-roofed space since they'd moved their stuff into the house. They'd agreed to have their long-term storage items put up here. Everything else was downstairs. Selina hadn't had a reason to come up here, until now. If she was honest with herself, Selina had to admit that she'd been waiting for this opportunity to come up here and look in Cade's trunk. Even distracted as she'd have been by the wedding, She'd mentally put finding out what was in the trunk on the top of her to-do list. The mystery of it was chafing at her. Um, Selina got to the top of the stairs, and she reached for the string pull for the single exposed bulb that lit the attic. She yanked on the string. Bright white light. Gosh, that's really difficult to say. Bright white light joined the yellow glow of the sun streaming in through dormer windows on either end of the big space. Because they hadn't yet accumulated a lot of stuff that needed long-term storing, just a few boxes of keepsakes and photo albums, a stack of luggage and several plastic storage bins filled with holiday decorations, Selena loved holidays, the attic was still pretty wide open. Just a couple dozen boxes were stacked at the south end of the space. 
Selina looked around, taking in the low crossbeams, the insulated underside of the roof, the aged grey wood floor, and the murky glass of the paned windows. She and Cade had plans to finish the attic and turn it into a big rec room, and maybe one day it could be a playroom for their future kids. A lot of work would go into that project, but for now at least the attic was functional as storage. Selina strode over to the stacks of boxes. Cade must have put the trunk behind them, or not. Behind the boxes, Selina found only more boxes. The trunk wasn't there. She frowned and turned in a circle. Given that the attic had no closets or hidden rooms, it was obvious the trunk wasn't where Cade had said he was going to put it. He'd lied. Selina ground her teeth. She felt her shoulders tighten. All her suspicions, which she'd tucked away successfully since that moment during the wedding, flooded back in. Her husband was keeping something from her. Or had he gotten rid of the trunk after all? Selina would bet big money that he hadn't. Huffing in annoyance, Selina left the attic and trotted back down the stairs. She closed the door to the attic and stood with her back to it. She looked up and down the hall. Where had Cade stashed that trunk? Well, if it was in this house, Selina was going to find it. She closed the door to the attic and thought for a moment. Where would he put it? The garage, she decided. That's where she would put it if she'd been Cade. The garage was more Cade's domain than it was Selina's. It was a three car garage and he planned to turn one third of it into a workshop. The other two stools would be for their vehicles. Although Cade had a lot of tools and athletic equipment and gardening stuff, there wasn't so much of it that could bury a trunk. It only took about 15 minutes of poking around the garage to determine that the trunk wasn't there. Now what? Selina returned to the house. The farmhouse wasn't huge. It was only about 2,000 square feet, with three bedrooms and one and a half bedrooms. Wait, what? The farmhouse... Oh, bathrooms. I read bedrooms. I read bathrooms as bedrooms. One and a half bathrooms. In all, the home had five closets, plus a pantry. Selina started in the pantry. She was pretty sure the trunk wasn't there because she'd been in and out of the room several times, but it could have been buried under boxes of pots and pans she hadn't opened yet. It wasn't. Selina moved on to the coat closet. No luck. She tried the linen closet, or linen or whatever. Uh, the closet in their room, again she didn't expect to find it there and didn't. And the closet in the room they were going to set up for guests. Hmm. Interesting. Four closets. I think. Is it four? Oh, it might have been three closets. Oh no, no there's four closets. Ha, huh, crazy. <laughs> Imagine if that's like a subtle nod. Uh, the last closet was in what now what was now a completely empty room. They hadn't decided on what this room would be, so they had just closed it up for now. Selina hadn't been in it at all since the day they'd made their offer on the house. The door to the empty room creaked when Selina pushed it open. The sound was so reminiscent of the soundtrack of a scary movie that Selina wouldn't have been surprised to find the trunk sitting right at, inside the door, opening like a gaping maw of a demon ready to... Selina stepped into the room. It was empty. Setting a jaw... Selina marched across the room and jerked open the closet door. She frowned. Although the closet's hanging rod was empty and the shelf above it was bare, beneath the rod and the shelf was the stack of boxes. This closet should have been as empty as the room. Why were there boxes in it? Selina reached for the box. She lifted it and practically tossed it over her head. It was so light that her lift was overkill. She shook the box. It was empty. Come on, what's in the, what's in the trunk? <laughs> Stop stalling. Uh, Selina picked up the next box and the next. Every box was empty. Why would Cade have filled this closet with empty boxes? They'd agreed to break down the boxes for recycling. There was only one reason to stack up empty boxes. They'd been used as a makeshift screen to hide something. Heat beginning to pulse in Selina's ears, she started tossing empty boxes out of the closet. Eight empty boxes. She threw them onto the vacant room's wood floor. Then she looked at a pile of blankets behind the boxes. What were the blankets doing in here? They should have been in the linen closet. There was also only one reason for the stack of blankets. They created a nice thick cloak. They too were meant to hide something. Emitting a growl of anger, Selina threw aside the blankets, and there it was. The trunk squatted in front of her. Its two clasps and its centred lock looked not, li not unlike a grumpy face looking up at her. A grizzled, grumpy face. Selina didn't waste any time. She dropped to her knees. She undid the clasps with two loud metallic clicks. This 
description of the trunk is very much reminiscent of the FNAF 4 box. I do have to say, I'm just saying. Then she tried to open the lock, but it wouldn't open. It was, well, locked. Where would Cade keep the key? Selina sat back on her heels. The key could be anywhere. Selina peered at the lock. Could she pick it? Hmm. Selina gave the trunk a dirty look, then stood and strode out of the room. She trotted along the hall and jogged down the stairs. She ducked into her office. Sitting, she opened, uh, where am I? Sorry, sitting, she opened her laptop and got on the internet. Her fingers were poised over the keyboard, preparing to type in how to pick a steamer trunk lock. But then she dropped her hands. She closed the laptop. To heck with it. She didn't want to mess around with learning how to pick a lock. She'd be better off breaking the lock. Selina got up and left her office. It took just a few minutes to return to the garage and get some tools. Not sure what she'd need, Selina grabbed a hammer, a crowbar, and a couple of screwdrivers. Once she had them, she returned to the house, ran back up to the stairs, and strode into the third bedroom. She dropped to the floor in front of the trunk. Selina had never needed to open a steamer trunk before, so she didn't know what she was doing. Maybe she should have found a video about prying open a trunk before just assuming it would be a breeze. She discovered quickly that the crowbar and hammer weren't helpful. Pounding and prying with a large tool did little more than make a lot of noise and put a few more jagged tears in the filthy brown duck cloth that covered those trunks wood slats. When Selina abandoned the larger tools though and picked up the screwdrivers, she had more luck. She finally popped the lock free from the trunk by using a two-pronged prying attack with both screwdrivers. When the lock pinged, loose from the trunk and clattered to the floor, she dropped the screwdrivers and did a little fist pump. Yes, she crowed. Eagerly, she put her hands on both sides of the lid. She started to lift it. From downstairs, a thud told Selina the front door had just closed. She heard footsteps, Cade's footsteps. Cade, her conniv con conniving, sneaky husband, was home, and boy was he in trouble. Her anger trumping her curiosity, Selina let go of the trunk's lid. She leaped to her feet and ran out of the room. She raced down the stairs to confront her lying husband. Cade looked up from shaking water out of his hair when Selina reached the bottom of the stairs. Boy, it's really coming down out there, Cade said. Thought I'd come home and have lunch with my beautiful wife, and halfway here, the sky decided to drown me. Selina glanced out the window. It must have started raining while she was getting the trunk unlocked. She hadn't even noticed. Selina looked back at Cade. She saw that his dark green polo shirt and his khakis were drenched. Normally, Selina would have made a joke about getting him out of his clothes, but she didn't feel like joking. She didn't care how soaked he was. Selina clenched her fists against her hips. Why didn't you put the trunk where you said you were going to put it? Cade wiped his face and looked at Selina. What? The trunk? You didn't put it in the attic. You hid it behind empty boxes and blankets. Why did you do that? Kate's faint face went so stony that it really could have been chiseled. Did you open it? Selina frowned at him. She didn't answer his question. <laughs> Interesting. Cade rushed over to Selina. His sopping loafers made squishy slapping sounds on the wood floor. He grabbed her arms. Did you open it? He repeated. This time he threw out the words so fast that they ran together. You didn't answer my question, Selina said. Cade gave Selina a little shake. Did you open it? Selina grimaced as Cade's fingers tightened on her arms. She jerked out of his grasp and stepped away from him. Did you open it? This time, the words were spaced apart. Did. You. Open. It. His tone was low, almost threatening. No! Selina barked. I was about to, but I heard you coming home and... Cade, Cade didn't wait for her to finish. He brushed past her and pounded up the stairs. Selina gaped at him for an instant. Then she shook off her surprise and ran after him. Cade got to the third bedroom seconds before Selina caught up to him. By the time she did, he was on his knees in front of the trunk. Taking a deep breath, he lifted the trunk's lid. Selina stepped behind Cade and looked down into the trunk. She exhaled her pent-up breath. The trunk was empty. Completely empty. No! Cade breathed. He breathed. <laughs> uh, he lifted his head and looked around. He was ashen. His gaze darted around the room, his eyes moistened. 
For a second, Selina thought he was going to cry. Then he wiped a hand over his face and looked back down at the empty trunk. Selina didn't know what she'd expect to find in the trunk, but seeing it empty had flooded her with relief. She still didn't know what the deal was with Cade in the trunk, but at least it didn't contain something horrible. I'm so sorry, Selina said. Selina put her hand on Cade's shoulder. Through his wet shirt, she could feel his shoulder trembling. In spite of being drenched, he didn't feel cold, so she assumed she... That she assumed he was shaking because he was so angry with her. She had, after all, not only made it clear she didn't trust him, she'd violated his trust, too. She'd poked into his private stuff. She'd have been furious if he'd done that to her. Not that she had anything to hide. I'm really, really sorry, she said. I just... Oh, I don't know. It just bugged me. Why you were so secretive about that stupid trunk. And I'm so sorry. I should have trusted you. I shouldn't have... Cade stood. He turned and wrapped his arms around Selina. It's okay, he said. It's okay. Selina wasn't sure it was okay. Pressed against his wet shirt-covered chest, she could feel his racing heart, and she felt the tightness in the muscles of his arms and shoulders as she returned his embrace. She also smelled something she had never smelled on Cade before. It was the odour of rancid sweat. She stepped back and looked at his face. His forehead was moist. He'd wiped away the rain, the rain, so it wasn't that. <coughs> Sorry. It was perspiration. He was scared. That was what she was smelling. It was the stench of fear. Selena knew it wasn't okay, no matter what Cade said. She didn't discover how not okay it was, though, until that night. Cade had settled himself pretty quickly after he'd closed the trunk and stuck it back in the closet. He'd ignored the scattered empty boxes and the blankets. It was as if he didn't see them. More likely, he didn't want to explain why he'd gone to such, such lengths to hide an empty trunk. Selina was so reassured by the empty trunk that she didn't press Cade about why he'd hidden it the way he had. Instead, she had said brightly, I'll make us tuna sandwiches. Cade had changed his clothes. Coming downstairs in another pair of khakis and a, a dark blue polo shirt, Cade's wardrobe was a little limited. He had made small talk about his work while they ate. Selina had told him about her morning walk. The conversation had sounded okay, with all the right bits of humour, but it hadn't been quite right. There was an undertone to their words, one that they both ignored. Kate had returned to work after lunch. Selina forced herself to put the whole trunk business out of her mind. She had to get some work done too. Dinner was a little more normal than lunch had been. She tried a new pasta recipe and Kate said he'd loved it. He'd even had a second helping. Only the barest trace of tension had remained between them by the time they'd gotten ready for bed. The tension returned, though, when Cade gave Selina a peck on the cheek and told her he was exhausted and needed to go right to sleep. Usually, they cuddled before settling in, snuggling together and talking drowsily about their plans for the next day. Not that night. Cade got under the covers and closed his eyes. Selina was wide awake, but she got into bed right next to him, and she turned out the light. They lit... <clears throat> They lay next to each other, not touching, not talking. Selina listened to Cade's even breathing. He was pretending to be asleep, but he wasn't. There was an outgoing hiss in his breath when he was really asleep. Selina didn't hear the hiss. That's such a specific thing. Um, Selina, who practiced meditation and yoga, was more adept at feigning sleep. She slowed her breathing and relaxed all her muscles. She knew it would have she knew she, yeah, she knew she appeared to be asleep, but she wasn't. Selina wasn't sure how long she'd focused on her breathing before she, she heard Cade stir. She felt the covers lift, a cool air current fluttered against her bare arms. The mattress shifted, Cade was up, the floor creaked, he was moving away from the bed. Selina just barely opened her eyes, she shifted her head slowly and quietly because they hadn't yet agreed on a colour scheme for the bedroom, the two paned windows that looked out over the backyard were covered only with the flimsy shears that the previous owners had left behind. The shears did little to block out light. Now they let in the radiance of a three-quarter moon in flimsy shimmers that sprayed across the room. Selina could clearly see Cade in that gleam. Selina watched as Cade got down on his knees. His head disappeared below the level of the mattress. He seemed to be looking under the bed. Cade raised his hand. Selina closed her eyes. She listened to his footsteps move away from the bed. She opened her eyes again. 
Cade was moving around the room slowly. It looked like he was searching for something. His head swiveled left and right and back again as he moved from his side of the room to hers. On her side, he opened the closet door. He looked into the closet, pushing back clothes for a few seconds, then shut the door. Selina closed her eyes again when Cade turned around. She concentrated on her easy breathing as Cade rounded the bed and got back under the covers. This time, Cade's breathing settled into his familiar hissing rhythm a few minutes after he lay down. It took Selina a while before she joined him in sleep. And that sleep didn't last long. Kate's footsteps woke Selina. Lying on her side now, she glanced at the clock. It was only an hour since they first turned out the lights. Kate was on the prowl again, listening intently. She could tell he was going through the same searching routine. Selina, de yeah, Selina debated whether to turn on the light and ask Kate what he was doing. Before they moved into this house, before she'd found out about his peculiar attachment to the trunk and his mysterious past at Freddy's, Selina would have met the issue head on. She wouldn't have hesitated to ask Cade what he was doing. Now she even now she knew even if she did that, she wouldn't get an answer. And she wasn't up to dealing with any more of Cade's evasiveness just yet. Cade got back in bed, and he returned to sleep. So did Selina. They repeated this process three more times that night. Come morning, Cade looked wiped out when he got up to go for his run. Selina was so exhausted that she went back to sleep until Cade returned from his run. She pretended she was asleep while he showered and got ready for work. She didn't get out of bed until she heard his SUV head down the driveway. Selina put up with Cade's nocturnal paranoia for nearly a week before she finally had to ask him what was going on. By then, she was dragging from lack of sleep. She was fed up. On the seventh night that Selina woke up uh, to see Cade looking under the bed, she sighed heavily and leaned over to turn on the ginger jar lamp on her nightstand. Cade's head shot up, his hair dishevelled. He blinked into the sudden illumination. He looked like a little kid, caught in the act of some mischief. I, I, I was going to say mischief, and then I realised it was mischief. or, or uh, It could be either, but I kind of said both at the same time, somehow. Uh, act of some mischief. Um, Selina scooted into a sitting position. What exactly are you doing? she asked. Kate blinked again. What do you mean? he asked in inanely. Selina pulled the covers up and crossed her arms over them. Don't play dumb. You know what I mean. You've been jumping in and out of bed like a jack-in-the-box for the last week. What's going on? You act like you're checking for the boogeyman. Cade rubbed his eyes and made a face. Sighing, he pushed himself up and sat on the edge of the bed. Selina stared at his broad shoulders and at the way his hair curled behind his ears. She loved those cur curls. Cade? Cade turned, then slipped under the covers with her. She lay back and shifted so she could look at him. He lay down too, facing her. Selina reached out and touched Cade's cheek. It was rigid and cold. She looked at the dark circles under his eyes. They'd been there since the night he'd started acting paranoid. Cade reached up and caught her hand. He kissed her knuckles. I never wanted to tell you about any of this. I just wanted to forget it. But now... Cade, what is it? What's going on? Kate took a deep breath. He opened his mouth and closed it. He pulled her away from her. Sorry. I need to stand for this. Selena's stomach lurched. What was he going to tell her? She sat up again, but she wrapped herself in the comforter. Even though the room's temperature was mild, she felt icy. Kate began to pace around the room. Mom told you that someone stole Lally, but that isn't true, he said. He glanced at Selena. She didn't say anything. She concentrated on composing her face into an expression of calm non-judgment. What happened, Cade went on, was that they were doing renovations in the Pizzaplex, and a construction scaffolding collapsed during a round of Lally's game. The collapse punched a hole in the game's exterior wall. Cade stepped over to the window and looked out into the night. The moon was close to full now, its silvery radiance put Cade in a spotlight. The auditorium was evacuated, and Lally's was closed down because Lally went missing. Cade went on. It was assumed he'd been stolen. But you said that that's not what happened, Selina said. Cade glanced over at her. He shook his head, then turned back forward the window. F toward the window, sorry. For weeks after the Lally's game arena was closed, I kept seeing Lally. I saw him everywhere. He and him, Selina thought, not it. 
I saw him on top of my shelves one day, Cade said. One afternoon, he was on my desk behind my toy astronauts. Once I parted the coats in my closet and I saw Lally standing there at the back of the closet looking out at me. I saw him once in the bathroom behind the shower curtain. Several times I spotted him in the backyard. He was always hiding, like he was playing a perpetual game of hide and seek. Goosebumps crept up Selena's arms. She rubbed them. Whenever I spotted him, he was always frozen on the spot, always smiling that half smile he had. Kate stopped talking. He rubbed his own arms as if he had goosebumps too. Selena cleared her throat. Was someone playing a joke on you? Cade turned. His expression was resigned. I wish. No. Lally followed me home. Selena's breath caught. Her heart started thumping so hard in her chest, she was sure Cade could hear it. Lally messed with me for weeks before I finally stopped him. Cade gave Selena a slightly triumphant grin. You knew Mum's sewing room? Oh, sorry. That was uh, Cade, not Selena. You know Mum's sewing room, Selina nodded. One day when she was at one of her meetings, I took everything out of that room. It wasn't much then. She just had the sewing machine on the table, that dummy that she pins her patterns on, and a few plastic storage bins. I emptied the room and I dragged the trunk into the room. I figured Lally wouldn't be able to resist hiding in the trunk. Selina bit her lip and remained silent. I waited an hour, Kate said. Then I ran into the room and I locked the trunk. I trapped him. Selena frowned. Did you look in the trunk to be sure he was there? Cade shook his head. I didn't want to risk him getting back out. I just locked it. I knew he was inside. Selena gazed at the man who up until this moment she'd thought was one of the smartest people she'd ever met. Cade was a programming genius and he could talk about almost any subject. His mind was sharp and his logic was impeccable, usually. The only thing Selina could conclude about what Cade had just said was that some part of his psyche was stuck in his childhood. He'd been so traumatised by the destruction of his favourite game that he'd created an elaborate fantasy around it. That had to be it. Obviously Cade hadn't trapped anything. He'd locked an empty trunk. But in his childhood fantasy, he'd convinced himself that his tormentor had been contained. It was his confidence that he'd locked up, Lally, that made his fear of the robot go away. That was why he'd stopped having hallucinations about, ha about Lally. He'd obviously been hallucinating. There was no other explanation. Cade returned to the bed. He sat down and rotated towards Selina. Say something. Selina took a breath. Then she laid out her theory. She finished with a story from her own childhood. My best friend Zoe, you remember me talking about her, went through a phase when we were in first grade. She was sure this big purple monster was living under her bed. I mean, she was sure of it. She talked about it all the time. Eventually, her parents did something similar to what you did. They said they were laying a trap for the monster and they caught, Selena put air quotes around the word, the monster in the box. After that, Zoe was fine. The same thing happened to you. When a child is convinced that something is trapped and can't hurt them anymore, the fear of it disappears. Cade started shaking his head in the middle of Selena's story. By the end, he was shaking his head so hard that his hair was whipping into his eyes. Lally isn't an imaginary purple monster. He's real. And he was in that trunk before you unlocked it. Hmm. Interesting. <coughs> I'm saying interesting. I know this. I know what happens in the story, but... Yeah, interesting. Hmm. Yes, interesting. Um, <laughs> Selena didn't miss Cade's use of, that pr of the present tense. Lally isn't, not Lally wasn't. Celine, oh no, there's a spelling mistake. Celine, 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 Celine. Uh, Selina decided to set this troubling detail aside for the moment. It was more than she could deal with. She scooted across the bed and took Cade's hand. Cade, honey, nothing was in that trunk. You were a little boy, a traumatized little boy, and you reassured yourself by telling yourself that Lally was locked into the trunk. That's why you stopped seeing it. It's basic psychology. Cade couldn't, uh, uh, Cade couldn't respond. For several seconds, he was frozen, staring at the floor. Finally, Cade reluctantly squeezed Selena's hand. We need to get some sleep. He got under the covers. Turn off the light, he said.